Lagrange air bound. This is probably one of the most confusing topics in calculus BC. So I always tell my students that they cannot use a formula until they have proved it. But today we're actually gonna do this a little bit backwards. I'm gonna write down the formula first, and then you are gonna be staring at the formula for a couple of minutes while I explain each term in the formula. And finally, in the part two video, that's when I am gonna explain why this formula works. So the formula goes like this: the absolute value of the error is less than or equal to m times the absolute value of x minus a to the n plus one power all over n plus one factorial. Lots of symbols there. And also depending on the source, the formula that you have seen may not look exactly the same as the one that I have here. I'll try to bring up different notations as we go. Let's start with the left side first, the error. Really, what is the error? Which error are we talking about here? Well, so if you are watching this video, most likely you have encountered Taylor polynomials before. And you should know that we can use Taylor polynomials to help us approximate the value of different functions. For example, I have a function f of x here that is represented by a Taylor polynomial centered at a. Okay, plus dot dot dot, and now I am just writing down the nth degree term. So now f of x is equal to a p sub n, which is the nth degree Taylor polynomial that you are staring at right now. Plus some leftover terms, so let's call it r sub n of x. R stands for remainder, by the way. So usually we don't want to, or we cannot evaluate the infinite polynomial at a given x values. So instead of using the infinite Taylor polynomial, we usually only use the nth degree Taylor polynomial to approximate f of x. So if we're only using p sub n of x to approximate f of x, the r sub n of x here, the remainder, really is the error of our approximation. So now you'll see what this error means, and we have some equivalent notations here. So again, depending on the source, sometimes you may see uh, the absolute value of the error. Sometimes you may see. The absolute value of r sub n of x, which is equivalent to the absolute value of the difference between f of x and the nth degree polynomial. And finally, some books websites also use this notation e sub n of x. Something that we should probably clarify right now. So the Lagrange error bound really doesn't tell you the exact value of the error, but rather it only gives you an upper bound of the error. Think about it; it should make sense, right? Because if there were this magical formula that could give you the exact value of the error, then you could find the exact value of your f of x. So there would be no need for approximation. So the point is, there is no magical formula that gives you the exact value of the error, and this is actually what makes Lagrange error bound useful. It tells you that hey, if you use this many terms, then I can guarantee that the error is at most this big. All right, let's talk about this M here. This M is probably the most confusing symbol in this already confusing topic. Again, depending on who's talking, sometimes you see M, sometimes you see k sub n plus one. So either way, they stand for an upper bound of the absolute value of the n plus one derivative of f of x. 
If you're like, what? Maybe just look at what I wrote down on the screen. Anyways, so on the interval between X and A. So A is just like the A in Taylor series, which is the center. Oh, and sometimes people may use a C instead of A for center. So the X here could be any X value that you're interested in. For example, if you're trying to approximate cosine 0.5, then 0.5 would be the X value. So this may not seem all that confusing just yet, which is good. But once you start solving problems, this may get a bit more confusing. One of the reasons is that m could be any upper bound of your function. For example, sine x. So sine x is bounded between negative 1 and 1, so 1 is an upper bound of sine x. But hey, 2 is also an upper bound of sine x. So how do you know which upper bound to use? I guess for now we will save this conversation for another video. Alright, so going back to the formula here, we have pretty much talked about everything. We talked about air, we talked about m. We also just talked about the a and x, and n here is just the degree of the polynomial that they are using to approximate f of x. So let's just add some modifications to this formula so that it can look more complete. So right now I am about to go over another notation, which I think is worth mentioning. But also feel free to move on to the part 2 of this video, which is the explanation of why Lagrange error bound works. So here is an alternative form of what we just discussed, and this is a theorem. So this theorem goes like this, let f be a function whose first n plus 1 derivatives are continuous on an open interval, so let's call it the open interval i, containing a, so here a is still the center, then our theorem guarantees that for every x in i, so for every x in our interval, there is a number z between x and a for which r sub n of x, which still represents the remainder, um, is equal to the n plus 1th derivative of f of x evaluated at z times x minus a to the n plus 1st power divided by n plus 1 factorial. So what exactly is this theorem saying? Well, it is saying, let's say, for example, if you're using a Taylor series centered at a equals 0 to approximate, say, cosine 0.5. So your x would be 0.5 in this case. And of course, you're using the nth degree Taylor polynomial rather than the uh, infinite Taylor polynomial. So the theorem guarantees that there is this number z that is between 0.5 and 0, such that when you plug in this z into the right side of the equation, you will get something that's exactly equal to the remainder. By the way, another notation issue here, lots of people prefer using letter c over z. And r sub n of x is still the remainder, and the absolute value of that is still the size of the error. And by the way, this formula is often referred to as Taylor's theorem or Taylor's formula with remainder. And some of you may be like, wait a minute, didn't we just say that, well, in most cases, we would not be able to find exactly what the remainder is, but how come there is an equal sign here in this theorem? Well, notice that this theorem only guarantees that there exists a z. So it guarantees that there is a z between x and a, but it does not really tell you what this z actually is. Now take a moment. Doesn't that sound familiar to you? So there exists a number on this interval such that blah blah blah. If you're thinking about mean value theorem, you are absolutely right. So um, you can do some research on your own, but basically the Taylor theorem is a generalization of the mean value theorem. 
Also, since this theorem does not tell us how to find z, but we know such z exists, so if we can find the maximum value of the absolute value of the n plus 1th derivative of f on the interval between x and a, then we can pretty much find the upper bound of the air, which ties back to the Lagrange air bound. So that's all. I hope this video was helpful and see you in my next video.